What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today I'm going to show you how to turn your tiny little lunchbox amp with no effects loop or no power amp defeat switch into a full-sized tube monster using this. The Two Notes Torpedo Captor. Let's do it! All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. My name is Kyle and I like to do weird shit. I also like to take high gain amps, overdrives, guitars, pickups, speakers, cabinets, record them with a simple SM57 setup, and give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E-standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and dudes who like to do weird shit, consider hitting the like button on your way out and subscribing so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. All right, hope everybody is doing great out there today. This video is 100% off the cuff. And the reason for that is I just picked up a Mesa 400 plus bass amp. If you guys are unfamiliar with that, the Mesa 400 plus is a legendary 300 watt 12 6L6 power tube beast of a bass amp. So what does that have to do with lunchbox amps? Well, I'm a big fan of slaving the preamp out of one amp into the power section of another amp to kind of mix and match different tones. But with certain amplifiers, that is not a possibility unless you have the right equipment. Take for example, the Orange Tiny Terror, which does not have a dedicated effects loop. It does not have any sort of preamp out circuit in it. It literally just has two speaker jacks on the back and that's it. So if you own that amp, even if you do have an external power amp or another amp you wanna run it through to get the preamp goodness of the Orange Tiny Terror into a larger power section, you just can't. Another instance is say you have something like a 5150 lunchbox amp that has an effects loop, but does not have any sort of, again, power amp defeat where you can essentially switch off the speaker jacks. That way there's an internal load on the amp and you no longer need to worry about blowing your amp up without having a speaker plugged into it. Well, with both of those amps, you can use the Two Notes Torpedo Captor as a reactive load in order to keep your small lunchbox amp from blowing up. But also, this has a built-in line out on the front. So, therefore, with no external power, you don't need any sort of nine volt adapter with this piece of gear. You literally just plug your amp into the input with the red ring here on the back. That takes care of the power section of your amp. And then, on the front, you run a line out from this jack right here into the effects return of your power amp or your amp that you're using as a power section. And you effectively have turned your little lunchbox amp into a 100 watt, 200 watt, 300 watt massive beast. So I'm gonna show you step by step exactly how to do that. And I am going to give you some live audio samples from a couple of different amps. Sound fun? I don't really care because we're doing it anyways. Let's go. Okay guys, so here are my two amps that I'm going to use for the initial example. I've got the Mesa Boogie Bass 400 Plus here, which is going to act as our power section. I've got the Orange Tiny Terror, which is going to act as our preamp section. So, okay, so on the back of the Tiny Terror, we have three speaker outputs and literally nothing else. There are no other options for us. So, we are going to run a speaker out of the 8 ohm jack because our two notes torpedo captor is an 8 ohm model. So from the back of that speaker output. Here's our cable. We are going to insert that speaker cable from the back of the orange tiny tear into the input of the two notes torpedo captor. And then on the front, we're going to take an instrument cable and we are going to stick it into the line out output on the two notes torpedo captor. We're going to set this aside. From that line out, we are now going to go into the effects return of this Mesa Boogie 400 plus, which just so happens to be on the front of this amp. And now we have to go ahead and hook up the speaker output or the speaker jack of the Mesa Boogie 400 plus into the cab that we are using. That is it for the hookup or the assembly portion of the video. We are ready to flip these amps off standby and go. All right, guys, now that everything is properly hooked up, we can kick both amps out of standby and see what happens. Keep in mind to keep your master volume low on both amps because uh, you might end up blowing your ears out if you have one set really low and one set really high. It still may be really loud. Here is the Tiny Terror into the captor into the effects return of the Mesa Boogie 400 Plus. <laughs> So it sounds incredible right off the bat. It sounds much bigger and fuller than the Orange Tiny Terror ever could. 
One thing to keep in mind though is with the Orange Tiny Terror or any other amp that does not have an effects loop where you're taking the signal straight out of the two notes captor, the further you push the volume on that amp, the more the power section is gonna be involved. So on an EL84 amp, those tubes tend to break up quickly. These amps tend to run out of headroom quickly. So you wanna find a sweet spot on the volume where the amp sounds good and is not overdriving the power section of the smaller amp because you are technically getting the tone of the power section into the two notes captor as well because we don't have an effects loop that essentially uh, sends the signal out before it gets to the power amp of the Tiny Terror. On the EVH, it'll be a little different and I'll show you that as well, but just again, something to keep in mind. So now, not only do we have our tone and our gain controls on the Tiny Terror, We also have EQ controls on the Mesa because if you are sending your amp out into a power amp or an amp that has tone controls that work with the effects loop, you now have more control over your tone. So I can dial the brightness, the bass, the middle. So I can dial the bass, middle, and treble as I see fit. Now they don't have a huge effect on the 400 plus, but again, you still have more control over it than you would if it was just the Tiny Terror. <laughs> So therefore, we now have a 300 watt 6L6 based orange Tiny Terror. I think it's pretty cool. I don't know if it's something that I'm gonna use, but if you guys do have a small lunchbox amp that you love the tone of, but you can't use it live because it's not loud enough and you have a bigger amp that you love the tone of, but again, you would rather have the preamp sound or the overall tone of the smaller amp, but at a louder volume, this is how you're gonna be able to do it. And overall, right now, we are really, really loud in the room. This is easily loud enough to get away in a band situation, so uh, yeah. What I'm gonna do now is I am going to show you guys how to do uh, a similar thing, but we're gonna use an actual amp. We're gonna use an EVH uh, 5150 50 watt amp, and then we're gonna use the EVH lunchbox, and I'm gonna show you how to do a similar setup with a lunchbox amp that has an effects loop into a real amp, not just a bass amp or a power amplifier in this situation. Okay guys, so we are now hooked up into the EVH 5153 LBX, going into the 5153 50 watt. Now the way that you hook this up on an amp with an effects loop is going to be slightly different than it is on the Tiny Terror that has no effects loop. We're still gonna run a speaker cable out from the speaker jack on the back of the amp into the torpedo. The torpedo now is solely going to act as a reactive load only. So this is basically just soaking up the power of the EVH and creating a reactive load so we don't blow the EVH up. So now, instead of running a cable from the output of the two notes captor, we're actually gonna run that cable from our effects loop of the LBX directly into the effects return of the 5153 50 watt amp. And that is really the only difference, guys. So if you have any further questions on that, let me know down in the comments, but yeah, you just are using the two notes captor as a reactive load for the 15 watt LBX, and then you're running a cable from the effects send of the LBX into the effects return of the 5150 50 watt. So with that being said, I'm gonna flip both amps out of standby, and uh, let's see what we got going on here. <laughs> So again, guys, we now have a 50 watt 606 powered EVH LBX. Now this makes a lot more sense to do if you don't own a bigger EVH head to run a smaller EVH head into a bigger EVH head, but I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes only. So your EQ, your gain, your volume will all still work exactly as they normally would on the EVH LBX. The one thing that's gonna be different is your power amp controls, like the presence and resonance are no longer going to work on this because your power section is technically just going into the captor and being defeated. So you're gonna need to use the power amp controls on the EVH 50 watt or whatever amp that you are plugging the LBX into. So our presence on the 50 watt will now affect the preamp of the LBX. <laughs> Same goes for the resonance. <laughs> 
So yeah, that's pretty much it. The EQ controls still work as they always would. So does the gain on the LBX. Your EQ controls down here on the 50 watt are gonna do nothing. But yeah, you can dial it in using the EVH. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me today on this video. That is essentially how you can use a two notes torpedo captor in order to slave a smaller lunchbox size amp or low wattage amp that does not have an effects loop or does not have a power section defeat switch into a larger amp, such as a 400 watt Mesa base amp or you know something as small as an EVH 5153. I hope that you guys found this helpful. You guys asked me a lot of questions on how to slave amps and this was a simple way to do it. With the Torpedo Captor, I will make a separate video on how to slave amps that do have a power section defeat, or if you're going to do it into two separate cabs, that also works. I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video, this is not sponsored by Two Notes at all. This was literally just something that I figured out on my own, thought it was interesting and fun and made a video out of it to hopefully help you guys. So keep that in mind. If you liked the video on the way out, please consider hitting the like and subscribe. That way you don't miss any more of my videos and hitting that like button definitely helps my channel grow. Down in the description of this video are all my support links, including my Sweetwater affiliate link, my Patreon, and the belligerent amateur community where you can join my Facebook group and Discord server. All that stuff down there greatly helps me out, so I appreciate you checking it out. Kyle here again. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.